In this video, I'll be sharing with you guys some epic tips for Dart programming. They're going to make you a superstar when it comes to writing Dart code. And using these tips, you'll be able to not only write more cleaner and concise code, but your code is going to be more easily maintainable as well. So like always, subscribe to my channel and hit the like button if you enjoy content like this. And let's get into it. The first tip that I'm going to be showing you guys is something known as the conditional spread operator. Let's just say that I have two lists, one of which can be a nullable list and the other list contains currently some integers within it. Let's just say that I want to take the contents that are within nullable list and then add them to this list that we're seeing here. The way I could do this is by using a spread operator like so. And this is basically going to take all of the actual elements that are within the nullable list and add them to our list of ints. But as you can see, it's giving me an error saying that a nullable expression can't be used in a spread. What you might try to do in this case is use some kind of if statement so that you can be like, if nullable list is not equals to null, then I can actually add the elements within nullable list and then use an exclamation mark here. But we're not going to be doing this. What we can do is actually cut through all of that and just use a null aware spread operator. And this is basically going to fix the error for us. And now if the nullable list is not null, then it's going to take the elements that are within that list and add that to our list. And then we can print our list to see what this actually looks like as you can see. And if for some reason our nullable list is null, then we're not going to encounter any issues. So now if I set the nullable list to, for example, some new values like two comma three and do run again, as you can see, it's going to show one, two, three, two, three. So this was the first trick that I wanted to show with you. The next trick on the list is going to be something known as a conditional if statement. Let's just say that I have a variable called include extra set to true. And what I want to do is basically based upon this condition, decide whether I want to include something within our items list or not. For now, I have apple and banana, but let's just say that I want to add mango to this list, but only if included extra is true. Well, how can I do this? Well, the traditional way of doing this would be to use an if statement and then do if included extra is true, then I am going to be adding that. But we can quickly avoid all of this and just quickly do this by using a collection if statement. And the way it works is as follows. We define an if clause and then we basically within parentheses define our condition, which in this is going to be include extra. And then after this, we can actually define what's going to happen if this condition is true. Well, in this case, if the condition is true, I'd like to add mango to our items list. And now if I go ahead and print run, you can see that the result is going to be apple, banana and mango. But if I set include extra to false and run this, this time this value is not going to be included as you can see. This trick becomes especially useful when it comes to working with widget trees within Flutter or working with widgets that accept a list of children. Because now by using this conditional if, you can conditionally specify if a children can be added to list to say a column or a row. So this is an excellent trip that I highly recommend you employ when you're building your next Dart or Flutter projects. Another cool feature about Dart is that we can define something known as extensions on existing types. So to showcase extensions to you, I'm going to be doing the following. I'll firstly define an actual extension on an already existing type within Dart, which is string. And what this extension is basically allowing us to do is extend upon the functionality that is provided to us by the string type, and then actually add a getter function on it. We can also define custom methods except for getters and setters. And then we are now going to be able to access these actual methods that we've defined within our extension on the actual string type. So let's just say that within my main function, now I print flutter. And what I want to do is basically check if flutter is capitalized or not. All I can do is just define my string now and then do is capitalized. And as you can see, because of us using the extension and extending the string type, we can now use is capitalized. And in this case, you can see that it's going to print true. But if I change the first letter to be F L U T T E R, then it's going to print false. So extensions are a very useful concept that you should try to master when it comes to Dart programming, and it could really help you elevate your programming to the next level and make it easy for you to extend the functionality that already existing classes or types provide you within Dart. The next tip that I'm going to be sharing is a tip about sets. Let's just say that you want to define an actual list of elements that you want to store within a variable, but you want to make sure that the values within the actual list do not repeat. To do this, you can actually create a variable that is a set. And when you add values to a set, it always ensures that all of the values within them are unique. So to define a set, we are going to be doing the following. I'll create a variable and I'll call this numbers and I'm going to be setting it equal to 
a set which is going to contain integers and the set notation is going to be these curly brackets. So this is how we actually define a set. And now that this is done, I can do numbers dot and then I can do add all. And here I can define a list of numbers that I'd like to add to my actual set. So what I can do is I'm going to create a list of some repeating integers, as you can see. And then I am going to say that after we've added these numbers, we can print numbers to the console. And because of us using a set, this is going to ensure that when we actually add the elements within this list to our set, that any repeating values are not included. And as you can see, our set only contains unique values, which is one, two, and three. So sets are another powerful concept that you can work with when you want to create a list of values and save them within a variable, but you need to ensure that they are all unique. Another powerful feature about Dart, and I see a lot of developers making this mistake, is that they do not use the cascade notation when it comes to working with objects. Let's just say that I want to create a buffer like so. And then on my buffer, what I'd like to do is basically to the buffer write hello like so. But now let's just say that after I've written hello, I want to access the buffer again. And to that, I want to write something else. But this is not going to be possible. And the reason for that is because currently, we're just invoking this function that's on the buffer object, and it does not return anything to us. What I can do is actually use the cascade notation, and that will allow me to perform multiple operations on the same object. So to use the cascade notation, we're going to be doing buffer dot dot right and then I can do dot dot right again and this is basically going to access the same object again and I can call right on it once more so I can do hello world like so and then once this is done I can after this do buffer dot to string like so and now if you print our buffer you're going to see that it's going to print both hello world and this is the actual power of using cascade notation that allows us to perform multiple operations on the same object Another cool feature about Dart is that we can leverage something known as null aware operators to simplify our null checks. Let's just say that I create a optional integer variable called A. And then what I want to do is create another variable called B, and I want to set this equal to A. But if I just leave it at this, you're going to see that we're going to get an error that's going to let us know that since A is int optional and it can be null, we can't assign its value to B. So what I'd like to do is basically give a default use case for if A is null, then what we'd like to do. We can either use if statements for this, but a better way to do this would be to use a null aware operator. And the one we're going to be using here is this, where we're basically going to specify, hey, use the value of A if it's not null. Otherwise, if A is null, then we're going to be using this default value, which I can set there to be zero. And if I do this and then I just print B, you're going to see that now the value that B is going to have since A is null is zero. And if I set the value for A to be five, let's just say, and then print B once more, this time the value of B is going to be five. So I highly recommend that you take a look at null aware operators, try to understand them to the best of your abilities because they're going to make it very easy for you to write cleaner, concise code that's less error prone. Another big blunder that I see a lot of developers make is when they try to programmatically create lists. And the way they go about this is by writing a for loop and then iterating and on each of the loop of the for loop, they add something to their list. A better way to do this is to use the list.generate function. And as the name suggests, it allows us to generate a list programmatically. So what I'm going to be doing is showing you how this works. The list.generate function basically takes in two arguments. The first is how many elements we want the list to contain. So in this case, I'm going to say five. And the next argument is a function that basically defines what each of this element is going to be. So on the function, we actually get the index passed to us, and then we can do whatever we want here. So what I'm going to be doing is taking the index and multiplying that by two and then the list.generate function basically returns a list to us so what i'm going to do is create a variable and save the list within it like so and then we can actually print the list to the console to see how it looks and now if i do run you can see that the console prints zero two four six and eight and if i want to for example generate a list of 10 elements i can do 10 and it works as intended. So by using list.generate, you can greatly simplify the way you create these programmatic lists within Dart. It's going to make your life a whole lot easier. Sometimes when we're working with lists within Dart, we need to create copies of the list. And a very easy way to do this is to actually use the list.from function. So let's just say that I have this list, which is the original list that I want to basically copy and create an actual copy of. What I can do is just basically create a new variable, which is going to store another list within it. I'm going to say this is going to be equal to copy, and then I can do list.from, and I can do original. 
And by doing this, what we're basically doing is ensuring that we're actually creating a copy of the original list and that if for some reason the original list changes, then the actual copy that we've made is not going to change. So to demonstrate this, I'll do the following. I'm going to do print copy like so. And before we actually print copy, what I'm going to be doing is then taking the original and to the original, I'm going to add something and I'm going to say that to original, I'm going to add four like so. And then now if I go ahead and do run, you're going to see that the copy is going to be one, two, three. But if I print the original this time, it's going to be one, two, three, four. And you might be asking the question here saying, what's the reason for using list.form? Can't I just do copy is equals to original? And well, if we do this, then we're not actually creating a copy of the actual list. We're just basically passing the reference for this list and saving the reference within this variable. So now if we add something to our original list, then our copy is also going to get affected. So if I do run this time, you're going to see that both our copy and our original are containing the same elements. And that's because copy is not storing an actual copy of the list, it's just storing a reference to the actual list or the location of the list in memory. So to copy a list properly, we do list.from. This actually generates a copy of the list and ensures that if the actual original list changes, then our copy is not going to be affected. So another excellent tip, and this is going to, trust me, save you a ton of debugging hours when you might be working with lists and not understanding why a certain change in one list is causing the other list to change as well. Another awesome feature that I recently learned about Dart was that it supports destructuring lists out of the box. And what do I mean by destructuring? Well, let me give you an example of it. Let's just say that I have a list of strings called fruits and I've set that to apple, banana, and cherry. And what I'd like to do is individually access the elements that are within this list and then save each of them within distinct variables. To do this, we can use something known as list destructuring where I can create variables and I can say that these variables are going to be taken out from the list that we're going to be passed. And then the first element is going to be saved within the variable first, the second within the variable second, and the third within the variable third. And then here, what I can do is set this to fruits. And what this basically is going to do is that it's going to take the fruits list and then the value of first is going to be set to the first element within the list and then so on and so forth. And now if I do print first, it's going to print apple. And then I can do print third and let's just run this. And you're going to see that it's going to print apple and cherry to the console. So list restructuring, this is a cool feature about Dart as well. The next tip that I'm going to be sharing with you is also another cool tip that's going to save you a ton of lines of code, and that is the ability to take nested lists and then flatten them out. So to give you an example of this, let's just say that I have a variable called nested lists, and it is a list which contains lists within it. And what I want to do is basically take all of these children's lists, extract the elements from it, and then just flatten them out into a single list. The simplest way to do this is as follows. We can create another variable, and I'm going to say this is a flat list. And then I'm going to set the flatten list to our nested list. And on this, I'm going to call the expand function. The expand function takes in a single argument, which is a function which takes in each of the elements that are going to be within our nested lists. So I'm going to call it X and I'll just going to return X as well. And then I'll take this iterable and cast that back to a list. And now if I do print flat list, you are going to see that now our list is going to be flattened out. So the expand function is very useful when it comes to actually taking in these nested lists and then converting them into a single flattened out list. Do you know we have the ability to define named constructors for our classes within Dart, and this allows us to clarify the intention for different constructors that we've created. Let's just say that I have a class which is going to be called point, and this class is going to basically have x and y as its property, which are going to be doubles. And I'm going to create the default constructor for this class, which I'm going to say point, and this is going to take in both the x and the y when the class gets initialized. There we go. But let's just say that on the point class, I'd like to create another constructor that will allow me to mark this point as a point of origin. So we can assume that our origin position is going to be x0 and y0. Well, what I can do is basically define another constructor, which I can do by doing point, but this is going to be a named constructor. So I can do point dot and then whatever the actual name of our constructor is going to be. So in this case, origin, and then I can just say x is equals to zero. And then I can do y is equals to zero. And there we have now we have another constructor that can help us initialize the same point class. But this time it's going to set the x and the y equals to zero. So basically, we're going to get an origin point instance given back to us. 
So now let's just say that I come to main, I can create a variable and I'm going to say point one, and I'm going to say that this is going to be equal to, and I can do point, and then here I can do one comma two, and then I can create another variable and I can do point two, and then for point two, I can set this to point dot origin. There we go. So then this means that the value for our actual point two is going to be x equals to zero and y equals to zero. So now if I do print point one dot x, and I do print point two dot y, you can see that for x, it's going to be the actual value that we pass to our point constructor. But for y, the value is set to zero for point two y because the dot origin named constructor basically sets x and y to zero. So by using name constructors, we can better clarify the intention for different initialization scenarios. And I highly recommend that you try to employ this the next time you're creating classes or working with classes within Dart. And the final thing that I'd like to talk about in this video is the ability for you to define default parameter values for parameters that are passed to functions. So let's just say that I have a function that is going to take in two parameters. The first is going to be a required positional argument, which is string and it's going to be called the name. And then within the actual read function, I'm going to do the following. I'm just going to do print the name like so. And then that's pretty much it for now. And then after I've defined my function, I can do greet. And here I can say Hussein, there we go. And then let's run this. And as you can see, it says Hussein. But let's just say that this function is not only going to greet somebody, but when they greets somebody, it's going to also say a greeting plus the name. And the greeting is optional. It can be passed to the function or not. So what I can do is actually use the square brackets. And by this, we're saying that these are going to be optional positional arguments. And the one we're going to have is going to be called greeting. And by default, the value of greeting is going to be hello, like so. And then within the print statement, I can do the same thing before I print the name, let's print the greeting. So I can do greeting. And then after this, I can say the name. So now if I do, for example, greet Hussein, you can say that it's going to say, hello, Hussein. But now if I copy this function call, I paste it again, but this time I say, good morning, like so. And then I do run, we're going to say that the first time it's going to say hello Hussein. But for the next time, since we are passing a value for the greeting, it's not going to use the default value and it's going to opt in to use our value, which is good morning. So with that, that's pretty much it for today's video. I hope that you learned a thing or two about working with Dart and the awesome programming language that this is. As always, if you enjoyed the video, then please don't forget to leave a like on the video and subscribe to my channel so that you get notified every time I release a new video. So stay happy, stay healthy, keep learning, keep growing. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.